Hello and welcome to the Pro Tipster Football Show. I'm Pro Tipster Paddy. Joining me today are Pro Tipsters Martin and Dan. And we have a whopper of a podcast for you today. We're going to be talking about the best of the Premier League's action from this weekend. We also take a delve into the Championship. And there's some La Liga action from Pro Tipster David, our La Liga Pro Tipster expert. Also, it's Super Bowl weekend, baby. The New England Patriots are taking on the Philadelphia Eagles, so we have a good old chin wag about that as well. Before we get started, though, a couple of reminders. You can listen to us on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We're on all of the Android podcatchers as well. Just have a search for Pro Tips for Football Podcast. We're also on YouTube. And we put them up on our Pro Tipster blog as well. Make sure and check out ProTipster.com where we will give you money if you're good at sharing your winning sports tips. And sure, even if you're not all that good at picking winning sports tips, then you should come on over anyway because there's loads of great tipsters there who are really good at it. And they'll be able to point you in the right direction of what matches and games you should be paying attention to. If you'd like to get in touch with us here, the easiest way is to go to Facebook and have a look for the Pro Tips for UK page there. We're usually lurking around there. So then, let's get to the football then. First up is the Friday night match between 22nd place Bolton and 5th place Bristol City. Um, it's an intriguing one. Um, so Bolton were very active on transfer deadline day. They sold Gary Medine, um, probably one of their best players, £6 million to Cardiff. Mm. Um, but they brought in... Zach Clough, Tyler Walker, uh, Reese Burke, who uh, Martin will know well, yeah. and John Flanagan on loan. So um, they're, they're, they've remodelled their team somewhat by selling uh, Medine. They've not won four, but um, their, their home form, uh, um, it's, it, uh, it's the Macron Stadium these days, isn't it? Yeah. They've only lost once in the last five games at home in the championship. You can pay that to Bristol City. Bristol City were on fire for a while, but... They've only won once in their last eight. They've not won five away in the champions, uh, in all competitions, even. So, I'm looking at this, and it's going to be diff- uh, um Bolton have got, have got to mould these new players into their team. They've actually got six low knees now. You're, you're only allowed to play five uh, in the championship match day squad. So, uh, but one lad's only played once all season. So, I've, I'm guessing Harry Charles is the one who's going to miss out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going for Bolton not to lose, uh, plus 0.5 in the Asian handicap at 1.82 because of Bristol City's poor away record. Yeah, has, um, on, on the, on the sign in there, uh, you mentioned John Flanagan. Has he been sentenced yet or what? What's going on there? Uh, I don't know. I think, uh, a lot of people's girlfriends are going to be very afraid in Bolton now. Oh, no, um, no, I found it, yeah. He's been handed a 12, <laughs> 12 months. Community order for attacking his girlfriend Rachel Wall. So uh, yeah, good riddance, man. I hope you enjoyed Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, right, uh, Martin. What do you think is going to happen in the match? Um, I, uh, you know everything that Dan says um, rings true, and and but I I just can't. I, I personally can't ignore that the, the Bristol City are evens um, at two point zero for this game. I know. Bolton are pretty good at home recently, and Bristol City have stuttered, but they got back to winning ways. They beat QPR 2-0 um, last time out, and I, I personally think that the Man City, the two-legged League Cup game with Man City was a bit of a distraction, and it, and it proved because they, they stuttered in the Championship, but now that's out of the way, um, I'll, I'll think they're coming to their own again and push on, so um, yes, Bolton have got a few new players in, like say Reese Burks at Clough, who are very, very good players um, for that level. But, like Dan said as well, they, they probably need time to gel as a team, and I, I think Bristol City could take advantage of that. So I, I personally think 2.0 is good value for me, so that's that's what I'm going for. Uh, Dan, back to you for a second on a, a little bit more of a Bolton. Uh, 22nd, are they fairly rooted to the bottom there? Do you think they're, they'll, they'll make it out, or, or are they done for? Uh, like like, the, like these these transfer signers, is this a desperate it's, plea it's last It's very, minute? very tough to call at the moment. There are quite a few teams, including mine at the bottom. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think the, it, it's really tight. Um, I think Sunderland are gone. Um, you look at the signings they made transfer deadline day, they were awful against us. Uh, I think Burton are probably gone too. Mm. So Bolton, it's, I, I would say it's between us, Bolton, Barnsley, um, Hull City maybe, Reading. There's quite a few um, options for the third spot. So I, I don't think Bolton will go down. I think they're okay. Um, in my personal opinion, I think Hull will. But we'll see. Oh. 
All right, then. Let's move on into Saturday. We'll stick with you, Dan. So sixth place, sixth place Arsenal are taking on ninth place Everton. Everton had a, had a good win last night. Seamus Coleman was back in action. Uh, Big Sam was very happy with the, with the performance. Arsenal, however, lost to Swansea. I did watch the Petr Cech, uh, replays, lads, after you recommended them. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, that was a good laugh. <laughs> now, this is, this is the late match on Saturday, but it's, it's the biggest one of the day. So, uh, Dan, what's your, uh, what's your predictions here? Um, well, I think the big thing is it's all going to be about um, Aubameyang making his debut. Yeah. Uh, this LMAO uh, forward line, um, <laughs> Lacazette, Aubameyang, uh, sorry, Lacazette, Mkhitaryan, Aubameyang and Ozil. I can't see how all four are going to play in the same team. Uh, we, we talked about this on Transfer Deadline Day uh, on Facebook Live yesterday. I can't see it. And I think Arsenal are lacking a centre-back. I think they really yeah. should have made a, a bigger push to bring in Johnny Evans or someone like that. Um, they've only lost once at home since March though, which is incredible. Um, Everton, um, they, they looked decent against Leicester. It was their first win for eight matches. Theo Walker, um, took his goals well. Like you say, it's good to see Seamus Coleman come in. Um, I was quite surprised they let Adam Ola Luckman go because, you know, this, uh, Everton are a team that don't really have pace or, yeah. or width and Luckman provides both and, I was reading Sam Allardyce saying it was a very unusual one because Luckman wanted to go to Germany and, and Sam was like, why? <laughs> but but he, he, I, Leipzig have got a really good reputation for younger players. I know everyone hates them because they're owned by Red Bull, but they have brought through some younger players and maybe that's why Luckman wanted to go there. Yeah, um, maybe Reese Oxford got in his ear because Reese Oxford seems to love Germany as well. And I think yeah. they know each other. Um, of, course, of course, Everton have bought in Elikin Mangala, who I, I'll be honest, I don't rate. No. Um, got him on loan for the end of the season. I looked at the odds of this and the goals. I looked at the odds of this for the handicap. The handicap lines are about one and a half in favour of, so minus one and a half to Arsenal, plus one and a half to Everton. It just looks skinny to me. I don't think Arsenal will beat them by two. But then again, I don't know if Everton will, uh, will, will, you know, not lose by two. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to leave this one alone for now. I, I've not. I, maybe when the lineups come out, I'll have a better idea. But at the moment, nothing stands out for me. Uh, Martin, they're very uh, Arsenal. Are, they're even more Jekyll and uh, Jekyll and Hyde than usual this season because they're so good at home, but lately they're just awful away from home. Uh, I saw some stat recently. They, they, I don't remember what it was, so that, that's a bad one to, to give an example of. But there was something on on on, on the brilliant uh, Reddit uh, soccer uh, forum. Uh, some mad stat about their away form, just how atrocious it has been lately. I mean, I don't understand it myself. I mean. Uh, like Dan said, it's, I think it's the fence that are the problem. Um, but they're in, ve- they're in real danger of being cast adrift at the top of the league. I mean, look at the top five now, and I think they're six points adrift of Tottenham in fifth now. Um, Burnley are catching them up. Um, so oh, it's worrying times if you're an Arsenal fan. And, you know, if anyone doesn't watch Arsenal fan TV, then I'd recommend watching that probably <laughs> if you want if you want to laugh over the next week or two. Um, but... For me, Arsenal are too short. Um, a very, very skinny odds. So I've actually gone for both teams to score at 1.94. Um, I know Arsenal are really good at home, but I just think um, Everton had a terrible, terrible run. But uh, they, they impressed me um, in midweek. And, and, and Theo Walcott has done, done his confidence a world of good with a couple of goals there. And, you know, he'll want to prove a point, I think, going back to the Emirates. Um, although Everton haven't won there for over 17 years, um, which is uh, worth noting, but uh, based <laughs> solely based as well, if you, on on the Swansea game, they were absolutely terrible at the back. So I, I certainly think Everton have got a goal in them, um, and I expect Arsenal to score as well. So I personally think 1.94 is a uh, pretty good value. Oh, I can just see it written written in the stars now. Theo Walcott to score to score a hat trick. Uh, if I can just find <laughs> hat trick, uh, where... he might have scored. I don't know about hat trick. <laughs> where are the odds? Where are the odds? I can't find the odds here. Uh, this is five hundred to one on William Hill. Theo Walcott to score a hat trick. You heard it here first, lads. It's written in the stars. <laughs> Theo Walcott re- returns to his former <laughs> sensei and really rubs it in uh, 500 to 1 I, I, I put a penny on it <laughs> if William Hill accept, accept pennies uh, let's move on lads to 8th uh, placed Leicester City are taking on 19th Swansea so there's a bit of a revival going on at Swansea they've um, taken a couple of scalps in Liverpool and Arsenal uh, Martin we'll stick with you on this uh, what do you see happening? 
Um, I mean, look, yeah, like you say, Swansea have uh, taken a few scales recently. Three in the last one, three of the last five uh, in the league, and worryingly for West Ham, they're getting dragged right back into it. Um, but yeah, for Swansea, there's renewed hope, and Carlos Carvajal, or however you pronounce his surname, not sure. Um, I love his analogies. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> superb. I think his latest one when he beat Arsenal was something saying something about um, it being in a hospital bed and. Uh, you know, they, they, they were stuck in the hospital for ages, but now they've beaten Arsenal. Um, they're on the verge of being told they can go home. <laughs> it's brilliant, Ran- isn't it? <laughs> yeah, very random. But, um, I mean, Swansea haven't won, um, at Leicester since 1950. Wow. There's a stat. Will, will Riyad Mahrez play? I don't know. He's got a lot of apologising to do, I think. But I was listening to an interview yesterday from Claude Puel and, I get the feeling that Puel's kind of said that if he's uh, remorseful and said like, "Sorry, guys, I'll give my best to the end of the season," then he'll he'll come straight back into the starting eleven. Um, the only thing is, Martin, he's done that last transfer window, the transfer window before that, and the transfer window before that. Well, yeah, I mean, he's the, <laughs> he's, he's the modern day Peter Oden wingy, isn't he? <laughs> um, <laughs> But Leicester are doing well at home this year. Um, beat Huddersfield three 0 beat Watford two 0 so haven't considered a goal this year at home. Um, and I think Leicester at one point seven three is pretty good value just for the win. Um, so that, that's what I'm going for. I, 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 I expected them to be a little bit shorter, um, but yeah, Leicester Leicester are good enough for the, for the win for me. Cool, good stuff, uh, Dan. Um, I, I was really shocked when I looked through Swansea's uh, stats because. Um, you know, they're, they're at the bottom of the table, but they're unbeaten in six in all competitions, you know, that they are. Carvey Carve House really turned them around. Mm. And like Martin said, you know, you've got to love the man's analogies. He's, he's probably the most quotable manager there is at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, Leicester, I, 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 I backed Everton to beat Leicester in the Facebook Live. Uh, unlike Martin, who got it completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, 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 fight, fight, I, fight. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't often beat Martin. But I have to. I have to make hay while the sun shines. Yeah, I, I'm not a Theo Walcott fan, and I was amazed that he had an absolute worldie. But that was Ben Chilwell's fault. He was. I think he was a fault for both goals. To be fair. Yeah, and I, I think Leicester were also harmed by all that Riyad Mahrez crap. To be honest with you, I think it's not helping them at all. Yeah. Um, I don't know how long that will take to settle down. Um, you know, they, they also let they let. Um, uh, the let King go to Swansea, he won't be allowed to play because he's only on loan and there's rules against that. Um, Slimani's gone as well. He went to Newcastle United. Yeah. But, um, Swansea got, um, uh, Andre Ayu in. They did. Uh, from West Ham. 18 million, wasn't it, in the end? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, I can't remember, I think it's like 12 million or something. We are going up to 18 million with add ons. Uh, add ons. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I looked at this one. I looked at the handicap line. It's uh, um, 0.75, and I've gone for Swansea plus 0.75, a 1.87, because as well as Leicester have played of late, I think Swansea are a team on the rise, and I think this Myers thing is going to be, uh, be a hangover for a couple of games at least. Uh, he's not going to be in the right place to play, and they're a poorer team without him in it. So that's why I've gone for Swansea. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Next up is 7th place Burnley are taking on Pep Guardiola's 1st place Man City. So I found a stat here that uh, uh, would be interesting for you. Uh, Man City can win the league with 8 more wins. That 8th game will be at home to Manchester United. And wouldn't that just be wonderful? Uh, I found something else. Wow. City have scored first in 14 out of 20 away matches. And there have been over 2.5 goals in 8 out of nine Man City away matches against other top half teams. Uh, Martin. Um, yeah, City are very, very short as, as always. Um, I think Tom Heaton's got to be a little bit worried about whether he's going to get his, his, his first team place back because Nick Pope is on fire at the moment. Um, saved a penalty obviously against, in case Newcastle in a one or draw in midweek. Uh, but Burnley haven't actually won in nine in all competitions as, as well as they've been doing. Uh, the last few weeks, it's, it's probably gone a little bit unnoticed because they're doing so well. Um, they are stuttering of late, and 
it, you know, they're getting dragged a little bit back into it. Um, they are seventh, but it's very, very tight. I mean, they're only, just looking at the league table now, they're only 11 points off. Um, it's probably enough to stay, to stay up, to be fair, but they, they need to sort their lives out. And they, and they're up against the Man City side, um, who are scoring for fun. I mean, I mean even Fernandinho scoring goals. <laughs> um, but, it's worth noting that Spurs, just before Christmas, are the only side to score three away at Burnley in the last three years. So I personally can't see Burnley scoring against City. So I've gone for unders here, under two and a half goals at 2.12. I can see City potentially winning it 2-0. Um, and I think that's good value there, considering Burnley just don't concede many at home. Oh, good one, yeah, because last night, last night was 2-0 against West Brown, wasn't it? Although on, on the, on 3-0. 3-0. Th- oh, ah, okay. Last time I checked it was only 2, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah Guerra scored. Ah, Not this minute. Ah, okay, that's probably why I didn't see it then. Uh, Dan? Um, much the same as what Martin said, um, obviously Man City team on fire. Burnley haven't won in nine. I think they haven't won since, uh, Sean Dyche proclaimed himself, uh, proclaimed himself <laughs> the Irish man in Prairiesville, whatever it was. Um, not the best thing to say. Um, they've also, Burnley have lost the last three at Turf Moor. Um, Burnley didn't make any transfer deadline day signings. Man City also, because of uh, the Maris thing, didn't end up signing anyone. And I, I, I wonder if that's going to affect them because I know what they were trying to bring in Maris because they're a little bit, Pep likes to have 22 players and they're a little bit light um, for the depths they want in attacking the field. You know, they've got, mm-hmm. They've got Nefsane, um, they've got um, Gabriel Jesus is out, Brahim Diaz came on for 20 minutes last night. And I just wonder, I just wonder if uh, Man City are going to be more reliant on players like Diaz in the coming weeks, up until the Champions, uh, up until the Champions League restarts, just to kind of like give their players a bit of a breather, because they're playing Monday, they're playing Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. Yeah. It's a lot, you know, it's a lot to... Um, to compete on four fronts as they have been doing but that being said I, I, I can't see Burnley scoring and I can see Man City getting at least two so I've got Man City minus one and a half at 1.84 very um, good I, I think it'll be two nil maybe maybe three mm. um, as much as I, I agree Nick Pope's on fire at the moment but this Man City team's something else um, I watched I watched them play against West uh, West, West Brom and the West Brom fans, uh, sorry, I was I was watching West Brom fans watching the game, mm. and one of my West Brom mates reckoned that Edison didn't touch the ball with his hands in the first half. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's you know, nuts. It, it was it was that one sided. Yeah. Right. But there you go, and and it's gonna be the same again, I think. So. Yeah, West Brom are in trouble. I, I personally think they're going down. Yeah, I think they could be too. Well, they won't be missed. Let's, let's be honest, lads. <laughs> you know, they really won't. They, they, they've had, I'm sorry, and I know there's lots of lovely West Ham fans out there, but like, the last time... West Brom? West well, Brom. Sorry, West Brom, West Brom, West Brom. And then there, there are no nice West Ham fans, we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, the last time something good happened to West Brom, Johnny Giles was the manager, you know what I mean? Like, it's they're just boring team that don't do anything. I'm sorry, West Brom. Send your hate. Send your hate at Pro Tips for Pod on Twitter. Uh, let's leave the Premier League and we'll go down uh, down down a tier into the Championship and we want to talk about Fulham. Sixth place Fulham taking on 15th place Nottingham Forest. So Fulham are on a bit of a are on a bit of a good run, but I found a stat here. Forest have conceded first. And 12 out of 17 away matches. Dan, I saw yesterday you were uh, talking, or I heard you yesterday talking about Forest. They have made, they made loads of signings yesterday. Yeah, they basically signed uh, a whole, well, it sounded like they sold, signed a whole team. They didn't. They signed six players yesterday. Uh, so, Adlian Guadiora, Costel Pantini, uh, um, Dijaga, who used to play for Fulham, but he was at Wolfsburg, Iranian international. Yeah. Jack Colback, uh, was he the Ginger Perlo? <laughs> um, I don't know about that. Joe Lolly, DVB, and who was the other one? Oh, Lee Tomlin, I'm learning from Cardiff. Um, Lee Tomlin's an interesting one because I, I, I heard my team, Bowen City, were interested in him. He got bombed out by Cardiff because he wouldn't move down from Leicester. He also got done for a fray. Um, so Forrest is an interesting move because it's a lot closer to where he lives. He might, um, blossom a little bit at Forrest. Um, but it's massive turnover of players. Um, and you've got to ask yourself how they're going to gel. Um, Fulham brought in two themselves. 
brought in Cyrus Christie uh, from Middlesbrough and Alexander Mitrovic, yeah. unknown from Newcastle up front. Both good players. Uh, I think Mitrovic is actually a bit underrated. I know he's a moody character, but the championship level, he, sh- he should he should be really good. Um, Fulham, good. F- four wins in five. Um, Forest, uh, the away win against Wolves was their first win away in seven. I've, I, I personally think Fulham are going to win this, but um, the odds look a little bit skinny when I looked. Um, I'm just going to see how Forest line up because I don't think they can play all those new players in one go. Um, if they do, I'm going to back Fulham for sure. As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Next up then, uh, first place Wolves. Uh, can they continue their march up to the Premier League? They are taking on seventh place Sheffield United. Martin, how do you see this one going? Oh, I have a stat first actually. Uh, Wolves, Wolves have scored first in 10 mm-hmm. out of 12 home matches, while Sheffield, while Sheffield United have conceded first in 7 out of 14 away matches. Wolves have won 8 out of 10 home matches. Right, Martin, what do you think? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, you know, because uh, this this game is is quite an interesting one. However, I, I fully expect Wolves to go on and win it, and and them at one point seven three at home um, is pretty good value for me just to stick it on a Wolves win. Um, they got back to winning ways against Ipswich um, at the weekend, and uh, I think they needed that. Um, there was rumours that they were going to bring in Jao Moutinho in the window as well um, yesterday, but that that didn't materialise. Um, but they've They've got a squad capable. They've got they've got a phobie now. Um, and if he pushes on from Bournemouth, um, he's gone back there. If he pushes on and scores scores, scores some goals, they can they can win the league quite quickly. Um, I think they're like twelve points clear of Villa or something at the moment. Um, <coughs> so they're not too far away from gaining automatic promotion. And Sheffield United, um, you know, they did lose to Villa in midweek. In, in midweek um, although Villa are on an incredible run at the minute. But they're also in danger of being, you know, left behind. They were doing so well at the start of the season. Now they're um, seventh in the league. Um, there's a bit, there's a bit of a gap that's, uh, starting to open, especially if they lose to Wolves and, and Fulham um, go on and, and win their game at the weekend. They'll, they'll be uh, five points adrift at the playoff places, and uh, it's not looking good for Sheffield United at the minute. So um, I think Wolves will win this one quite easily. Right, good stuff. Let's go back to the Premier League then. So, uh, 13th place Crystal Palace are taking on uh, Newcastle in 14th. So, really, I just nominated this match because uh, Newcastle have made some uh, some new signings. Um, what's his name? Finally left. Mitrovic got his move away. He's gone to Fulham. Mm. Uh, Palace, though. Palace are decent home. How do you see this one going, uh, Dan? Um, yeah, Palace one defeat in nine at home. Uh, Newcastle one winning five. Two in ten Premier League games away. That's all they've won. Palace finally brought in a striker, um, Sorloff. Um, yeah, never, yeah. never heard of him. Never heard of him. <laughs> um, and, and, and Palace had this thing of signing crap strikers in January. I don't know if you've seen the trend, <laughs> but like Yaya Sanogo was one. There's been others. I, I, Shamak. Oh, yeah, there you go. Marin Shamak. Jeez. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Sorloth, you've, you've got, um, quite an actor follow. <laughs> um, Newcastle, of course, swapped Mitrovic for, uh, Slimani, brought in a keeper as well, Dubravka. Um, I've not, uh, I've looked at the lo- handicap, the line is, uh, 0.25, so bookies have seen this quite even. Mm. Um, I've always thought Newcastle don't travel to the south well, they don't travel to London well, so I'm tempted just to pack Palace just for that. Um, I, I, I think Roy Hodgson's work wonders there as well. Um, so yeah, um, I kind of feel for Rafa Benitez though, because you know he's been proper done over this transfer window. I, I said before the window that all this stuff about the takeover is going to mess him up, and it did. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rafa walks. I really wouldn't. Um, I don't know if you saw the massive protest against uh, Mike Ashley last night. Yeah, um, did you? It was a, not exactly a slogan that tripped off the tongue, but fair play to the Newcastle fans <laughs> to like put it out there. Um, yeah, at the moment I, I've not bought anything, but I'm hedging towards Palace. All right, Martin. Um, yeah, exactly. I agree with exactly what Dan said. I'm, I'm going for Palace to edit at 2.05. Um, obviously, I was at the game at the London Stadium when they we, we drew 
West Ham drew one all with them in midweek, and I was just impressed with their pressing game um, and their counter attacking pace is unbelievable. And the and the way they when they lose possession, they seem to set up defensively really quickly. And uh, yeah, that really impressed me with Palace. And coming up against the Newcastle side, who have only won three away games in the league in the last two years. Um, They've also got, like Dan said, a horrible, horrible record in London, uh, especially. I think there was a record that, that there was some silly record, like they hadn't won in 27, 28 games a few years ago. Um, they just don't like travelling down south. And again, Roy Hodgson is, um, yeah, working his magic. And Palace, Palace, you know, they could finish mid-table at this rate. Um, they started to see them really badly, but I, I could see them winning this game. And Newcastle are banging trouble for me. Yeah, Newcastle missed the penalty last night as well. I think it was the first penalty, Premier League penalty in 26 home games or something like that. It's the longest uh, running Premier League uh, run of home matches without a penalty and then they go and miss it, which is just, <laughs> it's, that's just Newcastle, you know. It was a really bad miss as yeah, well. It was yeah. a really poor one. It was awful. Let's move on then. So the big match, um, Liverpool, third place Liverpool taking on uh, Spurs in fifth. Uh, Spurs made a pretty light work of Man United and Alexis Sanchez last night. Um, Man United were very, very mediocre. It looks like Jose Mourinho hasn't got a clue what to do with Paul Pogba. He's been wasted there in, in as a def- defensive midfielder. But uh, that's enough yeah. in my opinion. Uh, Martin, how do you see this going? Um, oh, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, Fellaini had a good game in midweek. <laughs> um, he lasted six or seven minutes. <laughs> but no, um, Spurs were so good against United. I know United were bad, but Spurs just all over the pitch were were exquisite, you know, watching Ericsson on, on top of his form, and um, it was really great to watch, although Denny Alli, he had an alright game, but uh, he's still got that part of his game where he just kicks out of play, I don't know if you saw yeah, him yeah. kick out of Sanchez, it's that. just petulant, yeah. and he needs to get rid of that from his game if he wants to if he wants to press on. Um, but, yeah, I'm really impressed with Kieran Trippier, hopefully he keeps his place ahead of Aurier at the weekend. Um <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, he delivered some great balls into the box. Um, and let's not forget, Spurs absolutely tore Liverpool apart at Wembley. So if they get, I know it's at Anfield, but if they get the chance to play, play the football that we all know they can play, which I think Liverpool will allow them to do at times, um, I can potentially see Spurs getting a very positive result. So uh, my bet for this one, I've gone for Spurs plus 0.5 on the Asian handicap at 1.79. Um, Harry Kane didn't really fire in midweek, so he's, I think he's due a good game this weekend, so it's going to be a cracker. Okay, Dan, on to you. Go for exactly the same bet. I got 1.81 though. Um, I, I read a stat, I read a stat that, Alex, that Alexis Sanchez, for the first time in the Premier League, the, um, hang on, let me find it again. He was completely nullified, completely nullified for the first time in a game in the Premier League. Alexis Sanchez did not create a single scoring chance or even attempt a shot and goal for the first time in any Premier League game <laughs> all season. The Mourinho effect. The Mourinho effect. <laughs> um, he's, going, he's going to turn Alexis Sanchez into a, a, a left wing back. Wait, wait and see, wait and see. Probably, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'd, I'd back Spurs to win before the game. I thought, um, I think if we had VAR, the first goal wouldn't have counted. As Harry Kane started the uh, started the game, you know the kickoff. Yeah, Harry Kane's yeah, yeah. yards in the menu half. Yeah, that's true. Kick off. Bit sneaky, bit naughty, but got away with it. Um, they won't get away with it again. But it was it was a nicely worked training ground routine for a kickoff. I thought. Mm. Um, yeah, and and Spurs. You know, you look at them going forwards. That they've brought in Lucas Moore as well. I think. So, uh, I, I think will be the the value signing of this window. And you look at Liverpool's back line and, ooh, you know, um, I, we, we've said it all season, haven't we? You know, Mignolet and Karius aren't, aren't really that great in goal. Yeah, um, yeah they've brought in Van Dyke, but their back line's not great. And I, I'd be worried, you know, Kane, Eriksson, Son, Mora. Yeah, even Deli Alley, even Petulance as he is, I'd be worried about that. And so I've gone for the same bet as Martin. I've gone for uh, Spurs plus a half at 1.81. Okay, joining us now then is Pro Tipster David, our La Liga expert. Hello, David. Hello, how are you? Not too bad, man, not too bad. So, um, too bad. actually, we, we were going to talk about the uh, Atletico Madrid-Valencia match. So, Atletico in second, Valencia in third. Uh, how do you see this game going? Uh, to be honest, I was checking the game before, 
Uh, for me, that game, I was thinking, we were talking about uh, betting, like one tip. I was thinking about over two and a half goals. Because uh, I can say that, uh, I mean, it's it a big game because Atletico Madrid is the second one in the league, and Valencia is the third one. And, uh, for example, for Atletico, Costa is back after he got uh, red card like uh, three weeks ago. So now he's coming back to the team. Last week, uh, Griezmann played really, really well. So I think uh, over two and a half can be interesting because I have to say that Valencia is uh, after Real Madrid and Barcelona is the team which uh, score more goals in La Liga. Only in two games during La Liga they could not score, mm-hmm. and in the other and the rest of the games they score at least one goal. So I think it is, can be. I mean, the game if we are talking about who will win, I think Atletico, but it can be. 2-1, 3-1, 2-2, something like that, 3-2. I think we are going to see a lot of goals in that game. Gusto, so, so, so what's been happening then during the week in La Liga? Were there any big transfers uh, into Spain or, or any big ones leaving? Uh, I can I can let you know the, the transfer, that the most important transfer that we have in La Liga. For example, the most important one is what the chain that Inigo Martinez, he moved from Real Sociedad to Athletic Bilbao for 32 million of euros. And it was like a, a big transfer because uh, uh, Real Sociedad and, uh, and Atletico Bilbao, they are the biggest enemy, let's say. All of them are for the bad country. And it was like a big, big transfer, like uh, quite a shock in Spain. Because a few years ago, uh, Atletic tried to try to get Inigo Martinez. But Inigo said that uh, he he will never play for Atletico, for Atletic Club Bilbao. <laughs> but now, you see, he moved. Yeah. Uh, more interesting, for example, we have uh, Bartra, that uh, he moved to Betis for 10.5 million of euros. He was playing in Borussia Dortmund, you know, mm-hmm. and now he's coming back to La Liga after playing for Barcelona. Uh, what else? We have, for example, Héctor Moreno. He moved to Real Sociedad for 6 million of euros. Is uh, maybe, maybe you remember that guy, he used to play for Espanol. Of course, yeah, and yeah. Now he was playing in Roma, in mm-hmm. Italy. Mm-hmm. So it's quite interesting. Central defender, so he will play instead of uh, Inigo Martinez, who moved to to Athletic. Uh, and what else? Six, uh, six Javi, million Javi. euros is a deal now, you know, these days. Yeah, not too much. I mean, the guy is maybe, I think, he's 30 years old, something like that. Mm-hmm. So he's a guy with a lot of experience in La Liga and in Serie A. So it's quite interesting for Real Sociedad. And another one, let's say, for example, I mean... There were not so many interesting transfers. Let's say, for example, we had Javi Fuego. He used to play for Espanol. Uh, he used to play for Valencia. He's a guy with a lot of, a lot of experience in La Liga. He moved to Villarreal for one, uh, one million and a half. So, it's another interesting transfer. <coughs> um, not so many, you know. There are not so, so, there are not a lot of money in La Liga. So. All, the money, all the money is in England, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. for example, I say, uh, I can, I can tell you the guys who are living in La Liga, this, uh, the winter market. I see, for example, uh, Laporte, of, of course you know already that he moved to Manchester City for six, uh, 65 million of euros. Another one, for example, Bakambu. He moved from Villarreal to China, to Beijing, 40 million of euros. Um, what else? We have Macherano. Macherano moved as well to China, 6 million of euros. And regarding La Premier, I see here Deulofeu. He's coming back to La Premier, to Watford, for 1 million of euros, but it's not a transfer, it's like only for one season, I think, mm-hmm. or long, till mm-hmm. the end of the season. And I think it's quite interesting for Deulofeu because he didn't play so much in Barcelona. And I remember him in Everton. He, he was playing really, really well in Everton, I remember. So I think he's, he's a guy for Premier League, let's say. I like him in Premier League more in La Liga. Oh, good stuff. Um, yeah. Not not so much, you know. You know the most interesting thing that I I saw in La Liga. Okay, uh, so the, what are the other big games then from this weekend? For the weekend, I mean, uh, Barcelona play against Espanol. It's a derby, the Barcelona, <laughs> again, after the cup. Um, Real Madrid play against Levante, away as well. But for me, another interesting game can be on Saturday. I have here one Eibar against uh, Sevilla. You know that Sevilla was playing yesterday in La Copa del Rey. Yeah, they drew 1-1-1, one, 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 wasn't it? One, one. Yeah, it was 1-1. One, one. So I see here quite interesting bet like uh, 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 Asian Handicap 0 
for uh, Eibar, 1.94, because Sevilla needs, needs to play next week again in the mm-hmm. second leg of, okay. uh, of the semifinal. So it can be quite interesting, these, these bets uh, for Eibar and against uh, Sevilla. Because I think that they are going to save uh, players for that game. Okay. And they have to save energy as well. They play yesterday and they are going to play again on Saturday. So there are only three days. Yeah, yeah plus three days both, of, both of them are away games as well. So there's a lot of good mm-hmm. traveling in it. All right, David, look, thanks, thanks for joining us then. And we'll speak to you next week. Thank you. See you next week. If you have any betting questions you'd like to ask, don't be shy. Get in touch with Patty, Martin, or Dan on Twitter. Protipster IRL, Protipster EN, or Protipster DAN. Or on Facebook at Protipster UK. Right then, so that was our uh, Spanish La Liga expert, uh, Pro Tipster David. Uh, thanks very much, David, for joining me. We'll ha- we'll have more from him next week, and Marco will be back next week as well. Best wishes to Mrs. Marco, who's not feeling the best today. So Marco has his hands full with two children and a sick wife. So we're thinking of you, buddy. We really are. Um, this weekend it's Super Bowl weekend, of course. The New England Patriots are taking on the Philadelphia Eagles, and I have loads of stuff written down here because I've gone full American football nerd over the last couple of months since I joined I'm glad you asked because I've got nothing written down <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me give you the odds then so um, the Patriots are uh, 1.5 to win the Eagles are uh, 2.65 this is the money line as they call it in America uh, the Asian handicap is currently at minus 4.5 for the Pats that's 1.92 and at 1.9 plus 4.5 for the Eagles. Uh, Overs, unders is at 48. So over 48 is 1.92. Under 48 is also 1.92. Dan, we'll start with you because I know you you really don't like Tom Brady. Yeah, um, I'm going to repeat what what I've written down. I hate Tom Brady. (laughs) Uh, You know what? I don't care that the Eagles are the uh, NFL version of Millwall. I think the Eagles are going to win. Um. I'm actually going to back the Eagles to win as well. Right. And okay, so when when you think of the Patriots, you think of Tom Brady and you think of the Gronk, Rob Gronk, uh, Gronkowski. Yeah. Gronkowski, you're in okay. Poland. Say his name properly. <laughs> yeah. Rob Gronkowski, yeah, Polish name. Say it properly. <laughs> um, who's not clear to play but set to play, I think. Um, but apart from Brady and Gronkowski, Patriots don't actually have a better team than the Eagles. The Eagles have a better team outside of that. Oh, yeah, t- you know, Tom Brady is um, probably one of the best quarterbacks of this era, even if he's a cheat. Um, <laughs> sue me, Tom. Sue me. Deflate me. Sue me. Um, um, yeah, but but I don't think their team's actually, their actual squad, as it were, is as good. Um, and Bill Belichick, you know. Oh, you're right. They, they, had, they had a better squad last Lakers. year. Yeah, and, and the this is the thing. I kind of feel for the um, when you've got a team that's done so well for so long, it's hard to keep it going. And the Patriots have done that really well. Mm. Um, I, I kind of follow the Seahawks, and the Seahawks have suffered mm. because they had a really good team for a few years, but it's just petered out now. And you know, they, they, they were only just scraped a, 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 a positive season and over five hundred seasons. So, yeah, um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm not the nerd for Super Bowl betting that you are, but yeah, um, my prediction. Well, Dan, Dan, are you are you taking them just outright, or are you taking them on the handicap, the Eagles? Um, I've not seen. Let, let me have a look at the bets. Uh, let me have a look. American football super bowl. Super bowl. Well, okay, yeah. so, so, so the money line, the Eagles are two point six five, or you could take them plus four point five at one point nine. Uh, plus one, plus one point four five. No, plus. Plus four point five points at one point nine odds. Ah, oh, to be honest, I'll, I, I will. Ta- I, I am considering taking Eagles minus one point five at two point eight eight. Ooh, them's fighting words. Wow. Um, what about That's you, man? Dubious. What about you, man? You know, you know what? I'm probably going to go for exactly the same bet as Dan's going to go for. Um, I want the Eagles to win as well. I'm, I'm not. I'm not huge on on, on NFL. Don't um, you know? Don't don't get me wrong, but I, I'm not a huge fan of the Patriots and Tom Brady. He does my head in as well. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I mean, it's actually the, the first time they've actually met for a few years. I don't think they've met for about um, for about two, at least two years. Um, 
<laughs> and during that time, I think uh, Tom Brady was playing for the Patriots back then as well when, when the Eagles last beat them uh, a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be tough. Um, I think it'll be very, very tight right up, right up until the last quarter, potentially. Um, you know, I think... The Eagles will probably play, uh, you know, a stingy defence in the first half that will probably force the coach, um, what's his name, Bill Belichick, yeah, Belichick. Um, and Josh McDaniels to, to probably make half-time adjustments to try and, you know, and try and get um, keep themselves ahead. I, I think they might take the lead. I might, I might take a lead at half-time, but it's all about the final quarter for me, the fourth quarter, because that's when Tom Brady will potentially come into his own and. Um, that's the worry for me. I, I think Eagles will be doing so well. Um, and I can, I don't know, I just see it. I can just see it. Like the Eagles doing so well. And then Tom Brady goes and does something. And, yeah. uh, and <laughs> something Patriots amazing. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, be yeah. fair, that's exactly right. Cause that's what he did in the last game. You yeah. know, he just marched them up the pitch to score. Yeah. And that's what, that's what Brady does. That's what he's so good at. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's the, that's what I think is probably going to happen. But there is a little part of me that really hopes the Eagles can win it. Um, <laughs> You see, you see, lads. I, I, I would normally be like you. I, I am because, and this comes from being Irish. So I'm always the underdog. You know what I mean? Supporting Ireland, you're always the underdog. You know? What I mean? Okay, not maybe not supporting Liverpool, but to be honest, I don't, I don't really care all that much about Liverpool. I, I more support Wexford, uh, Wexford uh, FC than than Liverpool. And so you're always the underdog. And yeah. normally, normally I'd be witches. I would want the new team to win. Like just like like I'll admit, like years ago when um, when Obrovic took over uh, Chelsea and Mourinho was in, and he had Damien Dolphin, Iron Robin. And and, 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 and I think it was Ruth Willett, no, and, and, okay, he had lo- loads of d- good players anyway, and I don't, don't remember them all, and, um, yeah, our first season, I was like, oh, this is brilliant, Chelsea gonna win, it's so different. and then like, uh, and then six months later, it's like, oh god, I hate Chelsea so much, you know, yeah. and this is the Eagles, and just looking at, like, their fans are just, Awful people. <laughs> They're just terrible. It's, it's honestly, it's like supporting Millwall in the FA Cup final. It's like, like, like Millwall. Millwall. The pole <laughs> in Philadelphia. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's about <laughs> climbing the pole. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, I, I found some 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 stuff that I thought was interesting, lads, and, mm. and I'll give you this. Um, now the line, so the Asian handicap line is minus four and a half at the moment for the Patriots. It opened at minus six, so if if you backed the Patriots at minus six, you're pretty unhappy at the minute. But on the other hand, if you'd backed the Eagles at plus six, then you're then you're laughing at the moment. Um, the Pats have beaten the spread in 11 out of 16 overall, and the Eagles have beaten it in 10 out of 6. So it's it's pretty even on the spread here. Um, overs and unders. This, this is the bet that I would actually be looking at more, because the line opened at 47. It's gone up to 48, so it didn't change very much. Uh, over... Over 40 is 1.92. Under is also 1.92. Pats have only gone over in 7 out of 16. The Eagles have also only gone over in 7 out of 16. And with the, with the Eagles having, you know, a really good defense, I don't see yeah. this, I don't see this game going over. I, I'd be happy to take, uh, under, under 48 in this one. And I was looking as well. I don't know if you know this website and all up and NFL backers use it. The Action Network website, uh, they have a, a really good feature where you can, uh, where you can see, they have a, a pro version and, and a free version, but on the free version it gives you, uh, where the money is going, um, on the sports books. So on the spread, uh, 52% of people are backing, uh, the Patriots, uh, minus, uh, four and a half. 48% are backing the Eagles. So it's, you know, it's, it's you don't, get, you, you don't really get a lot closer than that. Well, you do, obviously, but not much. On the totals, uh, 44% are backing over, 56% are backing under. So, and, and on the money line though, on the money line, uh, watch, watch, uh, so the Eagles to win at 2.65 and the Pats to win at 1.5. Uh, it's 59% of people are backing the Eagles. So, uh, they're, uh, the 60% of people are going for value here. They think the Eagles are going to win it without a handicap. Very interesting. Um, but no, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I, I, it's Nick Foles versus Tom Brady for me, and I potentially think that, you know, in the NFC Championship game, Nick Foles, um, you know, he totaled a lot of yards and um, in the air, three touchdowns as well. But I, I personally think that the head coach will, will probably set him up with a game plan that allows him to probably outgain Brady, but is that going to be enough? I don't, I don't know. I, I really hope it is, but... I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy watching it, that's for sure. Yeah, Although, it's gonna be good. The half time, the Super Bowl half time thing annoys me a little bit. Who, who is it this year? I don't actually know. 
Okay. I hope it's not someone crap. <laughs> Beyonce a few years ago, that was awful. Lady Gaga. Oh no, no. Like, no, Gaga was a few years ago. We don't want yeah, to Yeah, there you go. Black Eyed Peas. Justin no. Timberlake. Is it? Who? Justin Timberlake. Oh, come on. Seriously? Oh. Justin yeah. Travis Snake, yes. Oh, alright. Well, look, look, we better finish up because I know... Um, and the, Janet Jackson. To get, oh, Booby Gate again. Isn't that, wasn't that them, wasn't it? I think that was them, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was them, yeah, <laughs> 2004. All right, might get to see some action in a half time as well. Way. Right, lads, uh, we better finish up because I know that the studio is wanted for uh, more recording. Um, Daniel, please remind us where you are on social media. You can find me on Twitter at ProTips to Dan, all one word, or on Facebook as ProTips to Dan, all one word. Nice and easy. Magic. And Martin? Oh uh, yeah, come and hunt me down on Twitter at ProTipsterENG <laughs> or on Facebook at ProTipsterMartin. Cool, and you can get me on Twitter, ProTipsterPod, or I'm also on Facebook, ProTipsterPaddy. And we're always lurking around the Facebook uh, UK page, so uh, go to Facebook.com and have a look for ProTipsterUK. We put up uh, lo- loads of live stream videos there. Uh, we're really delighted that we're getting such a positive reaction to them, so we're definitely going to keep continuing to do them. Look, thanks everyone for listening. Tell all your sports mad friends all about us you can listen to us on iTunes Android podcasters we put these up on YouTube as well and of course we're on the Pro Tipster blog as well and you know finally like I say every time make sure and check out the protipster.com website where we will give you money for sharing your winning sports tips and if you're not all that good at, at predicting sports bets well get over anyway because there's loads of people there who are really good just go and have a look at the top of the page you'll find tipsters have a look in there and you'll easily find who the best tipsters are on the website all right then so that's it from me martin and dan we'll be back next week then with more football action all the best enjoy the football good luck thanks for listening everybody don't forget to check out protipster.com where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipster EN or ProTipster IRL. Bye.